Bjork is one of the most paradoxical figures in modern music. Despite a career spent pushing boundaries with aggressively experimental work, she's managed to influence artists across styles, from the underground to the top 40. From her ability to transmute avant-garde dance music sounds into chart-worthy pop, to her deep-dive collaborations with visual artists and fashion designers, Bjork's fingerprints are all over every corner of contemporary music. And it all goes back to her 1995 album, Post. Bjork already had a successful career by then, at least by Icelandic standards. She'd released her first album at age 12, and went on to front the cult avant-rock group The Sugar Cubes. Then, in 1993, she released her first proper solo album, Debut, to international acclaim. On Post, Bjork took more control over her sound than on her previous recordings, not only as a writer and co-producer, but as a curator of talent. Debut had been the product of an intense creative partnership with trip-hop pioneer Nelly Hooper. For its follow-up, she assembled a much larger group of collaborators, including not only Hooper, but Tricky, 808 States Graham Massey, and an Icelandic anarchist poet named Sean. The larger team helped Bjork to explore a much broader stylistic palette. Post was, by design, a dizzying tour through the wide-ranging field of music that held her attention at that moment. Much of it was percolating up from London's booming underground club scene, which Bjork had immersed herself in after relocating from Iceland. Post's industrialized lead single, Army of Me, reflected a shift towards darker, more aggressive sounds in the electronic avant-garde. With confrontational lyrics inspired by Icelandic ideals of self-sufficiency and a drum loop sampled from Led Zeppelin's When the Levee Breaks, Army of Me showed that there was more to Bjork than her reputation as a gentle Icelandic pixie. On the other end of the stylistic spectrum is Possibly Maybe, which was originally conceived as a country ballad in the style of Chris Isaac, but ended up borrowing the glitchy sound of ambient IDM that was taking over chill-out rooms at clubs and raves. Inspired by her breakup with video director Stefan Sednawi, Bjork called Possibly Maybe her first unhappy song. That didn't stop her from recruiting Sednawi to direct its video, though. Possibly maybe. One of the album's most successful experiments is Hyperballad, a blend of IDM and uptempo house whose shimmering sound defies easy categorization. More than any other song on post, it exemplifies the kind of genre-blurring electronic psychedelia that would define her later work. Bjork's commitment to staying on the cutting edge meant that the most stylistically conservative cut on Post was also in a way its riskiest. Its oh-so-quiet was originally written, in German, in the late 40s, and Bjork's faithful copy of Betty Hutton's 1951 big band rendition is a startling shift from the futuristic songs that surround it. The gamble paid off, though. The single charted around the globe, reaching number four in the UK, and the likewise retro-themed video, directed by Spike Jones, became a surprise MTV hit that was eventually nominated for five EMAs and a Grammy. As odd as it was, its oh-so-quiet gave Bjork a crucial toehold in the pop mainstream. Post-success ensured her the freedom to explore more experimental approaches on her following albums, starting two years later with Homogenic. Perhaps more importantly, her surprise success on MTV gave her a fan base that would include some of the biggest pop stars to come up in her wake, many of whom would find inspiration in her unabashedly eccentric image and ear for next-generation sounds.